showing my YouTube right now real quick. Uh, I think that's a play no. So, so what's the next step in all this? Then? Well, let me let me just let me just maybe it's too much okay. detail for you, but I think some people are curious. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is a protein called called ACE, ACE, angiotensin converting enzyme, and ACE will basically uh, create something called angiotensin, which will um, increase your blood pressure. It's a vasoconstrictor. So this drug in the middle is called lisinopril. Millions of people take this medicine as a pill. You get old enough, you'll take it too. And it uh, lowers your blood pressure. And so by stopping this enzyme from doing its job, this drug in the middle kind of acts like a lock in the key or like a piece of gum in a lock. Like it makes it so electrostatically this enzyme is not able to do its job. And so the calculation of what exactly, what molecule exactly fits in perfectly is complicated and when you zoom in you could see the electrostatic interactions these dotted lines are forcing this enzyme to stop working um, and so basically this is a great drug could you make a slightly better lisinopril probably I'm looking at this right here this group could be changed and it'd probably be even stronger um, and you would get a new patent and you could make a new medicine potentially or it might not work in my theory you could be wrong so or you could buy the patent and then you could raise the price of it. Well, that's something I, I would never do. But the the point is, um, you know, this could be a malaria enzyme that you're trying to inhibit to stop and cure malaria. This could be an Alzheimer's protein where you could uh, there's not been a good drug for Alzheimer's ever. And most people think that's the biggest gold mine, the, the, the biggest trophy that you could have in pharma right now is a uh, is a new uh, Alzheimer's drug. Or it could be a pesticide for a terrible uh, bug that is killing off, you know, uh, I don't know, coffee crops. Uh, it could be a drug for a certain rare animal disease, for, perhaps for your dog. Um, you know, it could be a plastic or some other polymer um, as well. So this tool can be used for to simulate lots of different chemical environments. Medicine's only one of those environments. Um, it's, it's up to the user. Really, yeah. Do you, do you know what terpenes are? Sorry? Terpenes? Any, is it something to do with a turkey, perhaps? No, terpenes. T-E-R-P-I-N-E-S. Terpenes. No, I don't know. What, what is that? What is that? Okay. I'm, it's like, well, I don't know if I can talk about it right now. Put me on. Stuff, but I know what terpenes are. And I'm just trying to figure, well, Quest, you explain it to them. Oh, terpenes. Terpenes. Oh, the chemical series. T-E-R-P-E-N-E. Yeah, yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cannabis related. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I use it for that? Yeah, no, it's absolutely. Uh, theoretically, you you could. In fact, we got um, somebody, an academic, focused on psychedelics, reached out to us. So. Okay. You know, Who's that? Can you message me? Uh, it's not that important, but the point is, uh, in fact, I can show you right now. Okay, do that. I want to see, please. Sure. So, 5-HT2A is. Here's a hallucinogen, 6WGT. So I'm gonna put 6WGT. So I Googled the protein, right? And I'm looking for something called a PDB file. The PDB, bot, PDB is a protein data bank. So in this PDB file, you have the three-dimensional structure of the human enzyme and the, I went to the wrong thing, to the, to the, and the drug, uh, often in so-called complex. If it's in complex, I don't know what I'm doing here. Um, Something weird going on with my uh, system. I haven't even seen this before. Anyway, um, so this is theoretically the drug that you know gets the user um, in a different state of mind. And um, let's put this into our software. Six WGT. I have to come up with our, okay, so here it is. It pulled it up from the PDB file. And we actually have, should have imported the molecule. There it is. And so this molecule You just spelled it wrong. <laughs> what do you mean? Me? I spelled it wrong. Um, so this molecule is a theoretical hallucinogen, according to 
the brief thing I've looked at. And again, derivatives of this hallucinogen could be made using the software, or at least studied, um, perhaps to make an anti-abuse version, perhaps to make, um, you know, study the, its effect on animals, things like that, but certainly uh, um, could be used for research purposes. So anyway, the point is, the point is, yes, you can model any biological system. Um, Damn. Any bio, eh, not any, I mean, any small molecule interaction with the protein, I would say, but, you know, in PDB, you can search for, in PDB, whatever cold, cold crystal uh, you'd like um, to see if, if uh, you know, you can model it molecularly. And again, just the modeling alone, the visualization wouldn't be useful. What you, what you do with our software is you run a screen where, where it, we, we can automate the processing of millions or even billions of molecules to see if that, uh, if, if, if a random new molecule from our, our list will, will fit. You never know which molecule might actually uh, fit, so. Um, since like, uh, since you came, or yeah, since you're in prison and stuff, do you know that like the, well, I don't know how it works exactly, but the definition of like bipolar one and bipolar two has been like increased to like bipolar three and bipolar four. Yeah. I mean, I don't pay too much attention to that stuff, but yeah, I'm, I, I understand. So I'm, I, I've been messing around with some cannabis products and reading and learning about terpenes and I'm trying to figure out if there's like a whole thing about it and that's why I'm interested in this right now well good luck with your research and stuff I mean I think it's uh did you uh you, are you using like a standard force field that you but that's like a shared one, or did you develop something new for doing your calculations and stuff? Yeah, we're using a uh, Autodoc, so we're gonna make it okay. so that we're definitely gonna make it so that you can provide your own or or use a bunch of different ones. Mm -hmm. So the main like the value proposition is the distributed computing and making it more affordable for yeah, people no, to run their calculations and hopefully a better interface too. Mm -hmm. I actually uh, interviewed at uh, Chemical Computing Group oh, cool. last week. Mo? I went to the office, yeah, and I saw it was so cool, like, such a cool application, and um, it's it's cool. Like, there is they have their own programming language and I all like, these plugins and different systems. Really I, cool company. I like Mo. I really hope they they hire me. Mo Mo has a lot of issues. I like it, you know, but it's uh, definitely has some issues. Expensive or it's not just expensive that their licensing model is really weird. Um, mm -hmm. Again, it's probably a good conversation offline. I don't want to disparage. It's good software. Oh, okay. I've used it many times. So yeah, it looks fun to use, and the graphics look really good. That, and, that's the main like, thing is it's got a beautiful UI, but it's certainly not mm -hmm. web certainly not web based, as you know. And then yeah, it has some other. I drama. heard that I heard they were talking about uh, starting to deploy it on on web. And the, the challenges that come with that, obviously, if you're trying to get dynamic results, like you need to wait for a response from their computer. So how do you handle that? Um, yeah. All kinds of things. But I, I think they're going to try to move that way from what I heard, from what I understood. I think that they're going to have to change their business model then because, you know, as of now, it's uh, quite expensive. Um, mm -hmm. So anyway, uh, lots of potential for them, but also a lot of risk. Um, Good, good product though. No, no, nothing. I'm not talking shit about them or anything. That's it's a really yeah. Good the people, really smart people there, man. I, I was thought, I, I interviewed with these people and they're like, like really, really the the real nerds, so to speak. Yeah. <laughs> it was nice. It was refreshing to finally see some people like that. Yeah. Hey, question on that, Martin. Um, I know you didn't want to go into too much detail, but can you? kind of say something directional about the licensing model that maybe is different or could be improved? About uh, our competitor? E yeah. <laughs> I, I, That's correct. You want me to talk about another software company's business? 
Sure. I mean, do that regularly here, right? I mean, yeah. It, well, it could be free. That could be a good start. Yeah, open source all the way. Let's go. I mean, not, it doesn't even have to be open source. Just free is fine. I love freeware. Yo, uh, I got I a think, question. I uh, think Schr Schrodinger has a better uh, approach to, to licensing and how they get a, like a commission if certain drugs reaches the market, they get a percentage. Yeah, it's that kind of arrangement. Pretty nuts if you think about it. You know, all I software is free when you're a pirate like me. <laughs> I got a question about. This thing uh, is a free like, lunch. You're paying for it one way or another. No, I'm not. <laughs> um, I don't trust like binaries. <laughs> there is a thing as a free lunch. You, you sir, have clearly never been dumpster diving. You, you've, you're taking legal risk. How about that? You're, you're also taking risks that you're going to get hacked. Dumpster diving, you're taking the risk that uh, people, you jumping in the dumpsters and think you're a jerk. I don't know. I think dumpster diving is pretty epic. I I don't think you have any, any real rebuttal to dumpster diving. No, there's reputation risk there for sure. Plus, reputation? also risk getting shit all over you. What do you mean? I think highly of people who dumpster dive. I'm going to think more of you as a person if I know you go dumpster dive. I believe you do. So, with pharmaceuticals, uh, like, you know how, uh, like, an an like, antipsychotics, for example, they'll have uh, fluorine atoms on them? Uh, I guess, like, uh, why... What, what does, like, adding a halogen do to a molecule? Like, why do they decide to add a halogen versus, like, something else? Is it, like, does it make the medication more effective? No, it's, uh, so halogen is iso isosteer for, for hydrogen. Um, so in essence, uh, there, it'll slow down the metabolism of uh, hydrogen. So instead of a CH3 moiety, you could have a CH2F, and that hydrogen is easily hydrolyzed, whereas the fluorine is not. So it'll, it'll extend its half-life usually a little bit. What? Okay, whoa. So it kind of seems like Pete, like a chemist, or just like throwing like random shit at like yeah. pharmaceuticals. That's but that makes do. sense. That's what we do until we get the perfect drug. Mm -hmm. but, but there's like reasons, right? Like, there's like two, there's two, of course, but there's two or two or three pieces. You have to optimize a lot of different things all at once. So you have to mm -hmm. optimize affinity, right? But you have to also have to optimize admet, so absorption, distribution, excretion metabolism and also toxicology. Mm -hmm. So if you have a problematic, say you have a, on a scale of one to 10, you have a, a binder that's a 10, but it has a side effect liability. You don't want that binder, obviously, right? Then you have one that's yeah. maybe an eight, but it's got really weird uh, metabolism uh, or very short half-life. Then you have one that's a seven, but it's got all the rest perfect tens. I would go with the seven. Um, and they call it like promiscuity, right? If uh, sure. a certain molecule binds to too many sites, it's not good. It's like too many different proteins. It's or too too short of a half-life, too small bioavailability. Mm -hmm. You know, there's so many different pieces that you can look at. So, you know, and you can't necessarily predict. Some of it's rational, some of it isn't. I mean, sometimes you say, well, we swap, swap this methyl for an ethyl, and it fit in the pocket better, so it's a better binder. And sometimes you swap it for, you know, I don't know, any other kind of, like, uh, uh, substituted heterocycle, and then you... Uh, you know, all of a sudden get this really weird property you didn't expect and you just shrug your shoulders and keep moving, <laughs> keep it moving. Yeah. So, you know, the, you, the reality you know, of the, of the structures, for example, in PDB or whatever, it's, it's crystal structures and proteins aren't nature right. crystals. They're moving and they're opening, closing constantly dynamic. So you, you can't really even rely on crystal structures. Yeah. And that's why we understand. We also have a molecular dynamic suite, which we haven't shown yet. So there's definitely mm -hmm. a mix. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you so, see the wiggling and stuff? That's, absolutely. That's <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it's, it's going to be a fun project and a fun company. I mean, I think, uh, you know, I'm just happy that uh, the investor community has uh, kind of overwhelmed us with interest. So, you know, I'm really proud of that. Um, sometimes you, you wonder if you build it, if they will come. And, uh, yeah, I have to sort of like, like, try to almost like turning away people from, don't have time to talk to everybody.
it would be awesome like for students and stuff to to use tools like that because unless you're on campus or you're logged in you can't necessarily use the tools that are available through yeah exactly school. i mean e even people at pfizer can't i mean if you're making 150 grand as a chemist at pfizer you think schrodinger you know they're really going to pay 50 50k for a schrodinger license you know mm -hmm. they're they're that's a that's a third of your salaries just for a piece of software a big they're, investment yeah. yeah so they're gonna they might say listen uh, you get the schrodinger and your three lab assistants don't you all have to share and it's like well i wish my lab assistants could have it too and it's like, oh, no, you all have to share the same login on one computer. It's like they're going to be the Schrodinger workstation. You can only access it at work. It's like, this is all bullshit, you know? Um, just go to druglike.com. <laughs> That's the hope, at least. You know, we're still only eight weeks in. New quote, this is bullshit. Oh, just go to druglike.com. <laughs>